Greetings. Today is Tuesday, July 29, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I want to talk about the high tropical cyclone activity we're currently seeing across the central and eastern Pacific. First, we have powerful Hurricane Iona, which reached Category 3 status last night. In addition, just to the northeast, we have Tropical Storm Kelly and several low-pressure areas we're monitoring that have the potential for tropical development over the next seven days. This cyclonic activity can be seen in the latest tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, which shows Hurricane Iona, Tropical Storm Kelly, and three areas being monitored for potential tropical development. Fortunately, all these cyclones and areas of interest are expected to move away from land, so they will not directly affect the Hawaiian Islands or the western coast of Mexico. Still, the level of activity we've seen in recent days is quite unusual and impressive, particularly with Hurricane Iona, since we haven't seen a major hurricane form in this region of the Pacific since 2018. In fact, if we analyze the potential velocity image, we can see in green where the area of greatest atmospheric instability on the planet is currently located. So, it's no coincidence we're seeing so much cyclonic activity in this zone. And as long as this activity continues in the central and eastern Pacific, it will be very difficult to see the formation of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite animation of Hurricane Iona, you can see that it is well south of the Hawaiian Islands. It's a very interesting hurricane because it has a small circulation and a very compact eye, structures typically associated with powerful hurricanes, but with a relatively small wind field. In fact, there's a possibility that it's currently a Category 4 hurricane, although this hasn't been officially confirmed. It appears to be at its peak intensity at this time. The National Hurricane Center forecasts that it will continue moving west to west northwest over the next five days, staying well away from the Hawaiian Islands. So, no impacts related to this powerful hurricane are expected there. Now, shifting to the eastern Pacific region, we also have a lot of low pressure activity and thunderstorms developing south of Mexico. This is where two to three tropical cyclones could form over the next seven days. In the latest tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, one low pressure system has been marked with high chances of development and another with low chances over the same time frame. So, it's very likely that we'll see the development of two or three additional tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific, which has already seen an extremely active hurricane season. Another surprising aspect is that this level of activity is usually seen in El Nino years, but as you may know, we are currently in ENSO neutral conditions. So this is a clear example that ENSO conditions are not the only factor that can influence cyclone activity in the Pacific or the Atlantic. If we look at long-range projections for the next 7 to 10 days, all the forecasted trajectories of the developing cyclones and those currently south of Hawaii show them remaining far from land. So, for now, there's no reason for concern. This is the ensemble projection from the American model, and we see the same trend when we compare it with the European ensemble forecast. Well, that's all for today's update on cyclonic activity in the Central and Eastern Pacific. Here at Hurricane Info, I'll continue monitoring for any changes in the forecasts, as well as any potential developments in the Atlantic. Before I go, I'd like to ask you to give this video a like. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking the red button and tapping the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. I hope you all have a great day. Until the next video, take care.